now. It looks like our game is about to start. The players are kneeling. We are imagining that they're kneeling, and they are actually kneeling. That's the power of imagination, everybody. Now, I don't know if you can hear, but in the quiet silence, we can hear another game being announced over there. There are several games going on at the same time. Don't listen to that other announcement. Listen to our announcement. Otherwise, you're going to be super confused. Just a brief reminder that Syracuse goat meat is on sale at the concession stand. The referee has given us a signal to be quiet. They're ready to go. So start holding your breath now, and hopefully the game will begin soon so we don't all pass out. Eyes down, no cheating, eyes closed, everyone, all players, even not the audience. Snitch is released. And he is off, he has taken flight, he is soaring towards the sun. I've lost sight of him now in the smog that blankets New York City. As a native New Yorker, that's correct. Brooms up! And they are off to a brilliant start. Flying through the air. You pit scores 10 points on the board. Let's see. If Bowling Green has a response to that early aggression from you, Pitt. The score is 10-0 here on field seven. Oh boy, that's... We are seeing some brilliant bludger work from you, Pitt. Pitt, just Pitt, says a man or a woman. Ghost. Ghost. I don't know a lot of anybody, but there is a Demetor on the field. There's a Demetor on the field, so everybody uh, try to stay positive. I think that's what you do to stop them. Now, just to update on the turkey leg situation, there's an entirely new person sitting in the exact same seat eating a different turkey leg right now. So if you have a turkey leg to eat, please come over here. We're gonna stare at you while you eat delicious turkey. Looks like we have a little bit of a standoff going on here between Bullock, oh, and Pittsburgh knocks it out. Grabs the quaffle, throws it to another player, the player number seven. Player number seven running. Oh, and it's through. All right, another point to skip Pittsburgh. Can we get a score check, please? And Bowling Green just went for it. Threw the quaffle as far as they could. Play number three for Bowling Green, being a little roughed up in there. Three players on one, but she's pulling out. Oh, denied. Don't go into that crowd of Pittsburgh players. They like to kill people. And that was another point to Pittsburgh. We're going to get 40-0 Pittsburgh right now. Pittsburgh dominating the field. Clearly that meditation technique we talked about earlier is paying off big time. Maybe Bowling Green should have tried a little more meditation and a little less practicing. That's all I'm saying. is being played in the crowd. I want to remind you what, guys of what Andrew said earlier. Please be careful. Watch yourselves. This is like a Gallagher concert. Oh, there we go. Fifty to zero. University of Pittsburgh in the lead. Their height and agility really an advantage down there on offense. They've got some amazing chasers. Forty to zero.
zero, not 50. Pardon my mistake. Here we go. University of Pittsburgh on the advance yet again, and he's been bludgeoned. Number six will not get the opportunity to score on this play. Bowling Green under the direction of Alexis, Alexis Booty regrouping, preparing to smother University of Pittsburgh. Oh, and she's down. Some rough play from number six on University of Pittsburgh here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a reminder that Quidditch is a full contact sport. If you can imagine doing something to another human being, it is possible, which we're seeing right here, right now, on pitch seven here at the Quidditch World Cup 2011. Bowling Green regrouping, preparing for an offensive onslaught. Oh, but Bludgeon kicking the quaffle back to his own side. Bowling Green taking a pause. This is something that they've practiced dozens of times. The old blocker move. And a deep pass down into the corner. Oh, and intercepted by University of Pittsburgh. Here they go on the roll. Their keeper actually taking the quaffle up the pitch. I believe that's another point for Pittsburgh, which should bring us to 50-0. 50-0, Pittsburgh dominating here. Now, you mentioned before that Bowling Green just kind of uh, paused on the field there. That's actually part of technique, advanced technique they use, where sometimes they fall down on the field and just pretend to be asleep. And the other team is lulled into a full sense of security until they pop back up like lions, scratch their eyes out, and take the ball. But here we go, Pittsburgh once again running towards the hoops. Ooh, very close. And I believe that was another score. 60 0 Pittsburgh. They are dominating this game. You know, Alex, we are seeing a lot of explosive yoga power from the University. personally wouldn't be surprised if... All right, Bowling Green gets up on the board. I personally wouldn't be surprised if University of Pittsburgh hadn't cast any spells or created any potions to dull the minds and bodies of Bowling Green for this match. Well, we talked about this way back in the beginning of the game, but Pittsburgh prides themselves on being the sexiest team in all of Quidditch, so I don't even need to know if they need a potion when their entire bodies are one beautiful love potion. That may be what's going on here, in fact, Pittsburgh blowing Bowling Green with their sexiness. Bowling Green so attracted to them, they cannot help but give them whatever they want. Yes, this, this is a really strange form of flattery. In this case, love comes before competition. And Bowling Green is really hoping that their, their, uh, their slow advances will hopefully win the hearts and minds of their opponents, University of Pittsburgh. Now a little moment that I don't know if you guys caught over here. We have this uh, ghost sitting by the announcer booth. The ghost actually stopped the bludger with his foot, which I have literally never seen a ghost do before. You would think the bludger would pass through him but I guess not. I guess he's only partially dead. Or, or maybe that's one of those powers like in the movie Ghost where he trained with the guy on the subway so he can kind of control. He's moving a little bit. Oh, very close here. Quaffle going crazy. That was a crazy throw. That was a throw to no one. 
That was a Hail Mary pass. A last dish effort by the team that is winning. Bowling Green regrouping on their end of the pitch. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing that maybe hasn't been on your mind, but should be, is the location, the whereabouts of that ever-elusive snitch and the seekers for both of these teams. Where are they? What are they doing? Who are they talking to? Maybe they're eating turkey. We really don't know, but I'd like to. Oh, wow. All right. This... This... Ah... Uh, I don't know exactly what's going on there, but it kind of looked like one of the players from Bowling Green punched another player in the face. I'm just saying, from my angle. Possibly that's happened. I hope everybody's okay going out there. We need to remember at this point, of course, Quidditch is a sport that is about fun and about everybody having a good time and magic and love and peace and all those good things. So... Hopefully everybody can shake hands and be okay here. If you in the audience could turn to the person who's sitting next to you, shake their hands, give them a big kiss, whatever you want to do, whatever you're most comfortable with. That's a, uh, our ghost is telling us he has no lips, yet somehow he's able to stop Bludger with his foot. So all I'm saying is, J.K. Rowling, inconsistent author. That's all I'm saying. Don't jump on me, you guys. And I mean, seriously, ghost talking? Here we go. University of Pittsburgh back on the advance yet again. Very predatory style of play from University of Pittsburgh. Like a wasp swarming around a piece of raw meat. We're waiting for word on whether or not that was, that was in fact a goal. University of Pittsburgh puts 10 more points up on the board. And the score is 80 to zero, ladies and gentlemen. And the snitch has been spotted by a ghost to our right. And there's the University of Pittsburgh seeker, the Bowling Green seeker, chasing down that snitch with a ferocity we haven't seen since Harry Potter ducked under a falling leaf to catch the snitch in the Quidditch World Cup of 2009. And the first broom is broken. Now the stitch was grabbed. Oh, we have a broken broom here. Please be careful with your brooms, people. But because the stitch was grabbed, I believe that means a win for Pittsburgh. Sadly, Bolly Green did show fortitude in grabbing the stitch, but that also means that they lost the match. At the same time. Yes, the winners of this match are Pittsburgh. Let's have a big round of applause for Pittsburgh. Let's also have a big round of applause for Bowling Green, who played their hearts out this game. This is a great game, guys. Great job to the Snitch as well, who ran as hard as fast as he possibly could. But it was not enough. And now he will go back to his Snitch brethren in shame. Also, over here, in case you missed it, in the uh, slightly less important event of one of the teams actually winning, our first broom broken of the game, broken clean in half. A reminder that Quidditch is also sometimes a kind of dangerous sport. I actually was told the story the other day, one of the early Quidditch maps where somebody was, shall we say, impaled by a broom. They're okay, they're doing all right, 